From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Can states tell Facebook and other social sites which posts to take down and which ones to leave up? The Supreme Court hears nearly four hours of arguments on that question. Welcome, I'm Kyle Peterson with the Wall Street Journal. We are joined today by my colleagues, columnists Alicia Finley and Kim Strassel. The marathon arguments Monday at the Supreme Court involved two cases, Moody versus NetChoice and NetChoice versus Paxton, one of which involves a challenge to an internet regulation law passed by the state of Florida and the other by the state of Texas. So, Alicia, maybe the best place to start is could you give us a sense of why Texas and Florida passed these laws and what they aim to do? So two different laws, they have some commonalities, but basically the Florida law bans social media platforms from removing the accounts of political candidates for office. I mean, this could be very local offices or it could be national offices or suppressing or censoring any posts by or about them. It would also prohibit platforms from taking any action to censor, deplatform or shadow ban a journalistic enterprise based on the content of its publication or broadcast. And it goes into detail into how it defines journalistic enterprise. So it would be larger outfits, but could potentially rope in some sub stacks, potentially with large numbers of subscribers. It wouldn't merely just apply for social media platforms. And that was an issue that came up during the oral arguments. It could potentially apply much more broadly to other kinds of online platforms like Uber and Etsy to the extent that they host comments. In any case, the law would also require the platforms to apply their standards in a quote-unquote consistent manner among their users. I mean, that's the broad brushstroke of what the Florida law would require. The Texas law, on the other hand, in some ways it's more narrow, in some ways it's actually more broad. So it's a little more narrow in that it couldn't be read to rope in the Uber or Etsy or even just plain old regular Gmail but it would ban all editorial decisions based on a viewpoint of a user's expression. And again, what that means isn't really clearly defined in the law. The law is also it would require the platforms to explain in detail why posts are being removed and to provide some kind of appeals process. Both laws would threaten the companies with penalties and potential uh, lawsuits. They create a private right of action which would allow private individuals, users to sue companies if they violate the law or their rights under the law. The big argument on Monday was whether what these social media sites are engaged in is First Amendment protected speech or whether it is some kind of other business conduct. And let's listen to the justices grappling with that. First here is Justice Brett Kavanaugh asking a question of Henry Whitaker, the Solicitor General of Florida, followed by Justice Samuel Alito tangling with Paul Clement representing Net Choice. And these are both from the Florida oral argument. Does the government apply such a policy to publishing houses and printing presses and movie theaters um, about what they show, bookstores, newsstands? In no, other no. words, be consistent in what kinds of uh, content you exclude. Could that be done? I, I don't think so, Your Honor. And why not? Well, well, I think that there is, is the, the consumer – here the, the social media platforms, their terms of service, their content moderation policies are really part of the terms under which they are offering their service to users. I don't think that that really – that that paradigm really fits in what Your Honor is, is – talking about. Uh, so, but, but, I, but look, we agree, we certainly agree that a newspaper, a book and a bookstore is engaging in inherently expressive conduct. And our whole point is that these social media platforms are not like those. There's a lot of new terminology bouncing around in these cases. And just out of curiosity, uh, and one of them is content moderation. Uh, could you define that for me? So, uh, you know, look, content moderation to me is just editorial discretion. It's a way to take the, 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 all of the content that is potentially posted on the site, exercise editorial discretion in order to make it less offensive to users and advertisers. Is it, is it anything more than a euphemism for censorship? It, I want to just ask you this. If somebody in 1917 was prosecuted and thrown in jail for opposing U.S. participation in World War I, was that content moderation? So if the government's doing it, then content moderation might be a euphemism for censorship. If a private party is doing it, 
content moderation is a euphemism for editorial discretion. And there's a fundamental difference between the two. Kim, part of the difficulty here is that these huge social sites are a new phenomenon with the Internet. And so you heard Justice Kavanaugh drawing analogies to a bookstore and saying that it's pretty clear that the government can't come in and tell a bookstore how to make its selection of materials and make some sort of law that says they have to do that in a quote unquote consistent manner. And you have others, including Justice Alito, who don't seem to think that analogy fits. And this came up a number of times and in a number of different fashions. Another example of this was we all tend to have in our head a pretty good idea of what counts as a social media site. But some of the justices noted that there are a lot of other online entities or businesses that rely on an online platform to do the work and services that they provide people. And how difficult or easy would it be to categorize some of those in the same realm so that this law applied to them? So, for instance, Google search, that's not necessarily people posting stuff. But if you put in a certain search term and you only get the top things as defined by Google's algorithm, and so it is essentially deep sixing some sites that you might want to see, could that be considered a form of content moderation and or censorship? Or what about Uber, for instance? One of the justices asked, could this law in the end somehow bar certain Uber drivers from picking up different people based on their political affiliations, etc.? It kind of went down a rabbit hole, but I think it gets to your point that this is a very, very difficult area to define. We can talk a little bit about how the states are trying to define this. They're trying to suggest that these groups are what you would call common carriers, so telephone lines, et cetera, I don't think that analogy fits either. One quick point, though, on the censorship versus content moderation. Let me say up front, I appreciate how frustrated conservatives are at big tech and their content moderation, which obviously is often geared against conservatives. But this point about how censorship is normally a term that is directed at government control of information, I think is very, very important important and will play a big role in the ultimate decision made by the court. Because this is something that I think this term is getting thrown around way too often. In a ways, conservatives ought to stop and think that they don't like. For instance, I just had a debate with my daughter the other day. She was saying that the school library was censoring certain books. And I was pointing out, no, they were curating certain books, making sure that kids weren't getting a hold of, for instance, pornographic material when they were in grade school, but that censorship is something we normally apply to government. 